member of the OSMUS board. I am not here in my board capacity. I am here in my amateur napper capacity. Um, I am here to talk to you. Uh, one of my hobby horses is taking uh, data sets that other people make and figuring out how we can jam them into a complete map. I want to leverage the things that they have done and put it in our map so that everybody can benefit. Um, so we're going to be talking about a particular data set called the GNIS data set, which is the Geographic Names Information System. It is run by USGS, and they have a web portal for this. It is a collection of geo-encoded named entities. And so this, you can go to their web portal, you can type in Mississippi River, and it will pull up this lovely little um, set of points with the Um, the, that is one way you can interact with the data. Um, you know that you can click into any of these and get a summary report. The summary report will have all of that node data. It will usually has stuff about where they derive that data from um, and a bunch of other sort of features about that. Um, the most important sort of thing that we are really focused on is this one. This is an ID that is shared across a bunch of data sets in the United States federal government. And so that gives you, if you can get the IDs into OpenStreetMap, then you can link them to other data sets and pull in more things from there. And so um, figuring out how to link those IDs into the stuff that we already have like makes our data set more powerful for other people who don't already have their stuff already linked to the set to do the linking that makes sense. Um, it's also a good way for us to say, this is MapMap from this data set corresponds more or less to their idea of it. Um, interacting with them one at a time is an enormous bother. Um, if you want to do something more um, serious, they have uh, what they publish what they call the national file. Um, it is updated every two months. Um, it is a type delimited file. Um, you can see way over there, the first um, feature ID is June 99. And it has the name, the state, these are various lat long coordinates in it, um, the date when it went in, the date when it was updated, and the field lifetime. It's not super critical to understand exactly the state of that. Um, there are two and a half million entries in the national file. Um, here on OpenStreetMap, we have about a million and a half, give or take, items in OpenStreetMap that have a, a feature ID that is associated with GNIS. Um, you can see there was sort of a big import in the long, long, long ago, then kind of like a medium-sized import, and then people were combining things and doing stuff and, and horsing around a little bit. And then uh, this big spike here is me. We actually, um, across the various imports that, yeah, across the various imports that people were doing, they were using different keys for these things. This is what I remind people about OpenStreetMap. You can add any key you want. People do. They love to add their own key. Um, so that was an effort that I did uh, last fall to sort of just shove all the keys into the one key. Um, you can see that there. Um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of mess dealing with all that because there are overlapping imports and all sorts of things that had to be fixed with that. Okay, let's look at one one feature just to get an idea of how this, uh, this data set works um, just at the one feature level. This, uh, we're gonna look at Middle Fork Big Creek. Get a great name. Um, so a lot of, uh, a lot of the names and stuff that come when people map, um, they'll look at a layer. This is USGS Topo. We can see Middle Fork Big Creek here. So that's pretty easy. You can look at that. You can look at, uh, you could add the, the a 3D elevation layer to that and get it sort of nice and typed in. Now you're gonna end up with a problem because at some point it forks. Where is the upper tributary of that? USGS Topo map does not tell you and people will draw the wrong one. Totally reasonably. So that, so that's why you can just go ask GNIS, and they say it's up there, and that's not. That'll help get you close enough to what's actually going on. Um, let's look at the other end of Middle Fork to look at another class of error that can happen. So this is um, this is Big Creek. common for people to just say middle fork. It's not middle fork, it's middle fork big creek. <laughs> it's not a leaf language. And so you will uh, you'll see errors of that type and you will want to figure out how to like extract them. These are totally reasonable errors. They were doing their best. Um, and you want to figure out how to extract those errors back out of OpenStreetMap. 
Um, another way that data in GNIS gets, in, gets sort of uh, muddled is that they change the names of things. That happens. Like, we can just decide things need different names now. And so um, there was an order to change a bunch of names, about 650 items um, a couple years ago, and a couple of mappers and I got together and we did that, and we did the only thing we knew how to do at the time, which is we made a giant spreadsheet. And we collaborated in a giant spreadsheet, and we queried to try to find all these things, see if they were, were in the maps, get the name changed. If they weren't in the map, then map them. We were trying to like reconcile all the different tags that we needed to do for all of these things, um, and it was an enormous pain in the butt. It was horrible. Um, but we did our best. Um, but while we did that, we learned a bunch of things, and we thought to ourselves, there has to be a better way. Like, we have to be able to trick computers into doing these things. A spreadsheet is not going to get it done if we had to do this again. So th that is the birth of the recognizer program, uh, which uh, I started and was has been mainly developed by another mapper named Kai. We uh, there's a channel inside of the OpenStreetMap US Slack um, where we chat about these sort of things. We're doing development work on it, um, and um, this is you know we can trick a computer into doing these things for us, and so. We had learned, when we went through the spreadsheet, the various techniques that we were going to use. We use Overpass, which is a querying tool for pulling you know, OpenStreetMap data and trying to figure out what's on there. We have the national file we can pull from. We can also pull from Wikidata, because Wikidata will have, they might have the river as a Wikidata item. They might have the GNS ID. That might not exist on OpenStreetMap, but we can like use some of the data from there to also um, cross-correlate some of these things. And we'll shove all that into, into Recognizer and um, let it chew on Overpass for as long as Overpass will let you chew on it. Uh, and then it'll cough out a bunch of results in various formats. And this is um, kind of the key. Um, so when you apply all of these things, uh, you, can, you, you, you can get results out the other side that will tell you there is a feature here. I expect a feature here with this name. It does not have that name. I need a human to go look at that. It will say, I expect to find a feature here of this name. There is a feature that has the right feature type. It's a river. Maybe it has that name. It will say, there is a feature here that has a GNS ID attached to it, but it has the wrong name. I need a human. Like, I cannot resolve that. Um, it will also tell you um, there's limited geographic data inside of GNIS. It's not um, like the National Hydrography data set is like, will give you big flow lines and, and high fidelity geometry. Um, but it has some geodata in it so we can say, you know, you didn't map it up the right tributary. You didn't put the post office in the right spot. Um, and so it will also say those things. And the, the trick here, of course, is to do fuzzy matching because you can't, like, if you, the geo coordinate you're gonna get is not gonna be exactly where we put it in OpenStreetMap down to the, you know, you know decimeter or whatever. And so we do fuzzy matching for that. It's tunable um, in various ways. We, find, we found generally that 100 meters tuning lets you capture a lot of the sort of fuzziness for those sorts of things. But um, for, some, for some feature classes, um, you need to tune it way up. You can imagine there are big feature classes where if you say, oh, look here, look 100 meters around it, but the feature is so big that you'll never collide with it, <laughs> like a gigantic valley. And so you, you do need to do tuning there. There's some, some learning there. We've kind of been putting that in there as we go. Um, the key outputs from these sorts of things is that it will, it will just spit out um, map roulette challenges. Um, and it will spit out um, change files and, and other XML formats so that you can just load them into, like, JAWS on the desktop editor or load them directly into map roulette. Because the, it's, it's all fine and good to find things, do things. But unless, you know, when we need a human, we need a human. So we will leverage the tools of the community to do that. And so we did a couple of these things. Oh, I guess we should do the stats page first. 42% um, of the current GNIS records are mapped in OSM. That means there's a lot of work to still do. Um, there's some other data here about various things. The ones I do want to call out are um, these two here, these two down here. There are 6,000 elements that have withdrawn feature IDs. This means that at some point, GNIS decided that never existed. That was a mistake. We shouldn't have put it in the database. But it's still an open street map. We also have 7,000 that are historical. That was, this was here, it's not here anymore. And so, we need to go clean all those up too. So there's a lot of work to do. Um, let's see where the rubber meets the road here a little bit. 
Um, we made a project on MapRoulette that we sort of put a bunch of experimental projects to see what would work and what wouldn't. Um, one of the first things we ran it on was we redid the spreadsheet. We asked Recognize it to see how we did on the spreadsheet. Um, you will see that it, uh, it found uh, almost half the items needed some more fiddling with because we did not do it correctly. Uh, so on tributary, typo the name, forgot one of the, the segments that needed to get added to, left the old name on that one, et cetera, et cetera. So now it's way easier. So now you can use MapRoulette to just click through it and load it into JAWS and load it into ID um, and get through all those things. And so uh, the blue line there is, is stuff that, that got fixed, that was improved further uh, because the computer could tell us we didn't do a great job. <laughs> uh, and then the, that's sort of like the last bit is like the error. That was like false positive. Um, I've been talking about a, a lot about n uh, natural features. Um, it's, you don't have to just use natural features. The um, Gia and I for a long time had structure data, so fire stations, um, uh, mail uh, post offices, things of that nature. They don't control that data anymore. They've handed that off to another org, but it's still in that older national file. Um, so uh, we did a project um, uh, related to some more work that was happening in ASU to about heat, re uh, heat resilience mapping to uh, go and map an under map feature in th that we have, um, which is mobile home parks and finding out where these are on the map lets folks do better outreach for when there are conditions of high heat. These communities are much more susceptible to high heat um, and um, just knowing where they are is important. And so we, we created a recognizer project using the GNIS data um, for populated places. Um, and some of those are, you know, some of those look like this, some of those are now apartment complexes now, but it's really easy from aerial imagery to go and do this using some of those structures. We did another project where we mapped fire stations in Hawaii in response to the, the fire disasters that are going on there. You can very obviously, like a fire station just looks different from the other buildings that are around it and you can have good imagery to do those things. Um, another one, um, back to natural features, um, Kai put a project together to import all of the missing summits that were in Alaska. Um, working on the community forum, a couple of uh, folks jumped in there to help him validate and run through all of that. We added about 1,500 mountain summits. Um, he was able to do this in just a couple of evenings, loading data files into JAWSM and sort of clicking through them, verifying new stuff around, not editing the things that were clearly wrong, sending some mail to GNIS asking about things that were clearly like really ambiguous. Um, we made a waterway project for named waterways. This is uh, about 1,300 waterways that are named in GNS that are not on the map um, in any way, shape, or form. And we used uh, UMAP to make this just to see, just make a project. Um, this is just a bunch of pins. People can color them when they start working on them as just like a task manager. Um, I have made, we have made a map that is a vector tile map. This is, um, I call this uh, Utah map. Uh, the right there is all of the OpenStreetMap data that exists. This is like everything. You can just see everything. You can filter it. You can do the various things. But we also have a layer. Um, you can go to this website. This is why this is the missing GNIS data. We, we unleashed the beast on um, Utah and created a layer that is everything that it thinks is missing from the GNS database. It's right there. Um, and then you can do the same filtering that you can with the other things. So this is all of the natural waters, so lakes, ponds, that GNIS thinks exists that are not on our map, they're not there. Um, uh, I like to remind people that fixes go both ways when you're working with authoritative data. They can be wrong too, just like we can be wrong. Um, they're very nice when you send them mail. We've sent them a couple of hundred corrections or questions. They've corrected their database about 100, 150 times. And every two months you sort of get it updated, which is really great, and see all that flows. Contact information, good, and all of that. Please chat with me if you want to get a project set up, you have some other data set you want to think about working with, et cetera. And then I have uh, links for when I send out the slides. Yes, sir. Yes, we have a scheme for, for hassling overpass. In, you know, we, we query for features with the, the right ID, we query for features with the right name, we query all the name fields, we query this, we query that.
Those guys again. Yes, GNS. Yeah. Uh, yes. Exactly, yeah. So we've done this for a couple of other things. We haven't done for GNS. Um, but basically, yeah, anything you can feed into it that is a name and a feature type of some kind, you can do a mapping to, uh, to OSM tags. That's, that's a thing you can configure. Because um, like they have feature types. Um, but they still need to know what, what tags it needs to go look for to go find a river and go find a whatever. Uh, it's implemented in C-sharp. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? You can catch me after. You can catch me after? Do you have a, there's a quick one. There's a quick one, let me do it. Yeah, because because the machines yeah the machines gonna be like where did this go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you can send a mail. Uh, th there's I'll send the the slides out. There's an email in there. You can send it to GNS and be like this thing seems to be gone. Should be marked as historical. Um, the other thing that we do we have an errata file that we have that is just like it's we haven't been able to reconcile the national file with what we see on OSM and they're still getting back to us, so we kind of shove a bunch of stuff there to say, ignore this, don't do this, don't pass it with these things, we're kind of investigating all that. Because you, you want to be able to say, I looked at this and I said it was fine, leave me alone. And so we have a, we have a little file for doing that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can add old, you can lifestyle, like lifestyle, 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 life cycle prefix that. All right.